G'day guys, welcome to another edition of the Detour Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jones, and we are live from Ballarat. We've got the National Road Championships on at the moment, brought to you by Federation University, and I'm joined, as always, by four-time National Road Champion, Johnny Chavarro. Johnny, you're live at the finish line, and your internet is rubbish, so you could drop out at any moment here, mate. Can you hear us, John? But you're dead right. You're dead as rubbish. I can hardly hear anything you were saying because I'm going off my, my iPhone, but it's uh, obviously a lot of people here and it's not working real well. But I, I am excited about today because we are talking about the future of Australian cycling. We're talking about the two young superstars who are really going to take us the next step. And, and they're, they're, they're not just young superstars. They are both only just 20, they don't turn 21 to the end of the year. I'm talking about, of course, Luke Plapp and Sarah Giganti, both who won the time trial uh, just the other day, uh, beating you know the elite time trial. Luke was going to ride down 23s, but he stepped up and uh, what an amazing ride. And, and they were both the big stars uh, uh, last week in uh, at uh, the Santos Festival of Cycling, Tour Down Under, um, and, and what a future. So, uh, um, I uh, on board right now. Yeah, we're joined live by Luke and Sarah. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, now, we know a little bit about your history. We all obviously know that you're both superstars, but you started your journey together at the Brunswick Cycling Club. And, uh, you know, there's that photo that has been absolutely milked to death uh, that Matt Keaton tweeted out of you guys doing the uh, the sling together out on the track. Uh, I'll start with you, Sarah. Take us through the the journey and and particularly the early days. And you guys have obviously got a, a strong bond. Yeah, so I think I started first. I turned up back in two thousand nine in February, so I was just eight years old. And I told my mum that I wanted to do the Great Victorian bike ride on my own bike rather than doing it on a tandem or trailer bike again. So I'd done it when I was five, six, and seven, and it's like five hundred k in about nine days of riding so quite a long way for a little kid so mum googled cycling clubs for kids for me and we lived in diamond creek at the time so brunswick wasn't the closest but it came up as the best family friendly club so yeah we put the mountain bike in the boot of the car and drove along one sunday morning and dave morgan he looked at the bike and he said you need a real bike so yeah he hands me like this fixed gear brakeless bike and i took yeah, one minute, 27 seconds to do the 30 second challenge, just one lap. I was in my own grade for a while, I think, because I was so much slower than everyone else. But yeah, I just loved it. And it wasn't too long after that Luke joined. And all through under 13s, 15s, we were neck and neck, weren't we, Luke? Gosh, we used to go out to King Lake, Macedon and do some training rides. But then even like every track race, Novon Combine, always... Luke and Sarah, hey? Pretty cool. What What are your memories, Luke, of those early days? Yeah, oh, holding on to Sarah's wheel for dear life. She used to <laughs> play in almost every single road race we uh, we ever did. Um, up in, like, Country Vic, all the Northern Combines up there. So, yeah, it used to be me and Sarah up there, and she used to put me away about every single time. That's not true. We were really close. It was a great rivalry, <laughs> both on and off the back. I remember... You were pretty um, into the Monopoly too and not a very good loser. <laughs> well, we've just lost Johnny Trevorrow as expected and he was just going to come in and out throughout the show. But I want to talk about, um, a lot of people talk about how important it is to have mentors. Um, Luke, did you have sort of cycling mentors in those early days? Uh, I guess I had my coaches who I who I looked up to, obviously, and who they helped me out. Um, for me, I sort of started riding um, – in 2012 when I was pretty inspired by Cam Myers' ride at the World Championships in Melbourne when he won the points race. So that was sort of what got me going and what got me uh, inspired and motivated to ride. And did you, were you able to reach out, oh, sorry, Johnny's back again. Were you able to reach out to guys like Cam and, and talk to him about um, and pick his brain? Yeah, I certainly have now that we're in the track team together and that's been pretty awesome to, to learn off him and do some Madisons with him. That's He's what his expertise is, so it's been great to learn from the best in the business. Um, but also, like, go for training rides on the road with him and all the other boys, which has been pretty special considering I have looked up to them. And now, Glenn O'Shea is one of our coaches, too. 
And what about you, Sarah? Did you have any uh, mentors throughout that journey, particularly in the last sort of four or five years? Um, through the last, the more, more recent years, I definitely have been lucky to be on uh, some teams with some pretty cool people. So starting with my first NRS team, I was a development rider on Holden Women's Racing. So I was surrounded by absolute legends there, like Kimberly Wells, Lisa Hawking, Shannon Melsey, Grace Brown, like Louisa Lobix. It was such a star-studded team and I was just a little under 19, like, oh, my gosh. And they were all so lovely to me. Um, and then I was on Rock Salt and Peter Mullins was a fabulous mentor there. And then now on Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, I have some great teammates, but also um, riders like Spratty I've always looked up to. And I do remember um, I, when I used to do a lot more track, so back in under 15, I think it was, Luke, I remember we used to go around saying we wanted to be like, I, I think we just said it to each other, but you wanted to be like Cam Meyer and I wanted to be like Annette Edmondson. So it's pretty cool that now we're both racing alongside those people. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what are some of the, the key things? You're talking, um, Luke, about chatting with Cam. What are, what were some of the key tips that he gave you back in the day? Uh, oh, I'm still learning off him uh, today, uh, these days. But I think more so using your head rather than your legs. That's something that I've always sort of always cops it on the legs, but I guess tactics and learning when to go and finding the moment. I think that's what he's best at and what a lot of the boys are in the team. I think Lee Howard as well. That's something that I guess he doesn't spend an extra what if he doesn't have to. So he's one of the smartest riders that I know and I've learned a lot from him too. So I think for me, it's about reading the bike races, which has been the biggest help from those boys. Can you hear us, John? No, he's gone. <laughs> um what, uh, on that theme again, Sarah, what, what was some of the best advice that you've had so far? I think the best advice throughout like my whole life, well, I say cycling career, but that's pretty much my life because yeah, I've been racing for more than half my life. I think it's just been the attitude from our club, Brunswick Cycling Club, the whole time has just been keep the emphasis on having fun. Like, yes, you can train hard and race hard and go fast if you like, but make sure fun is number one. And it's cool to think that having fun and going fast aren't mutually exclusive at all. Like, in fact, I think the more fun I'm having on the bike, the faster and the better I go. So, yeah, people like Cam McFarlane have really drilled that home. And I think that's the best advice I've had. Well, it's funny you mentioned that we uh, we had Dave Brailsford on uh, a couple of months ago. And obviously they had massive results at the Giro and uh, one of the things I think even directors are understanding is exactly what you're saying, that they're not mutually exclusive. It's, it's important because if you don't enjoy what you do, you're not going to do it well. John, can you hear us? Are you there? That's the first, that's the first words I've heard for the last uh, eight minutes that we've been on. G'day, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to get much in here, and I don't I have no idea what you've been talking about. But, We're talking um, about fun. How important oh. is it to have fun in <laughs> racing? So, well, John... I've been doing yeah, that all my life, point. mate. That's my, that's my, uh, yeah, I've been having too much fun, actually. But anyway, I'm at the other end of the spectrum. But uh, look, and I'm sure you've talked about the, your early days together. And if you talked about uh, Sarah's challenge when, when she uh, broke both her wrists when she was just a kid. No. I think, you know, well, that, that's a wonderful story. I mean, when she was preparing for the Worlds and her year 12 uh, SATs or whatever they are, breaks both wrists. I love the story where you couldn't even type out your, your work. Your mum had to do all your typing for you and you prepared for those junior worlds on the home trainer with broken wrists and went over there and you still got a medal in the points. I think you got silver in the points race. A wonderful story. Yeah, that was a hard year. Three years ago, it, it feels like a lot longer, <laughs> actually. I'm glad I don't remember it too well, but yeah, it was pretty rough. I broke my elbow, wrist and shoulder. And my elbow was like shattered. And, yeah, I was in the middle of year 12, so mum was trying to scribe all my homework for me. And then I was trying to go to school, but, like, I couldn't carry my books. And then, like, doors, people would obviously, like, you're not expecting to, someone to come through behind you with, like, no arms. So, like, doors were, like, slamming in my face and, like, people bumping my elbow. It was so painful. And then, yeah, I just trained on the ergo for so long. And then I just got last-minute approval to head over to junior worlds so that was it was pretty relieving that i could go after all those ergos but yeah it was a hard year got a medal and then only a, a pretty 
average score. What was it? 99? Yeah. Is that the, the maximum you can get? <laughs> yeah, 99.95. But yeah, like I, that, that feels like a long time ago now. I don't think I could do it again. Like I feel so lazy. I still study full time at uni, but year 12 was so much harder. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I don't know. Uni's so laid back compared. You're the Don Bradman of Year 12. That's an unbelievable score. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it is. It is. But he got a duck in his last uh, his last inning. But I love the journey, and you guys have obviously been talking about it, but you, Luke, as well. Your parents have actually obviously been really, really important. I know Terry quite well, but I don't know your parents very well. I speak to your dad, but uh, Luke. But they've obviously been a really uh, a strong part of the journey so far for you too. Oh, yeah, our parents are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, that, they are. They've taken us everywhere. Um, I still remember almost every Christmas going up to the Tassie Christmas carnivals and racing there or all the junior tours that they drove us around for. So it's pretty pretty special. I guess it was weird when I had to leave them to go to Adelaide as well. Um, I guess they've been there every step of the way and always helped me out. <laughs> but I also love coming home and getting back to mum's cooking. Or when mm. I'm, I come home for a couple of days, she always makes me a massive lasagna to take back to Adelaide with me, which is really cool. <laughs> So now you were born in Tassie, uh, that, that, uh, right, Luke? You no, no well, from... I'm born in Melbourne, but the whole family's from Tassie and Bernie. Ah, so okay. Up there, yeah. So a little okay. bit of Tassie. Yeah. So given given the situation that you're both in, I mean, there is a. Do you find, particularly in Australia, right? We see juniors come along and start showing really good results but then we love slapping tags you know we love going oh hang on these guys could be anything or whatever do you guys feel that pressure you know giving these sort of early tags i'll start with you sarah particularly you know when you won that stage at uh Wollonga, uh you know the amount of buzz and hype and they're looking at your times do you feel that pressure or, do, or does it excite you knowing that people are recognizing you know this hard work is paying off it's definitely cool that Races like the TDU are being, or the festival of cycling, are being like recognised just for even just women cycling and in Australia particularly, it's coming a long way and the field's so strong. So I really like that part of it. But yeah, it's definitely, I've noticed, uh, I haven't noticed it before this year really, but yeah, I feel a bit more pressure this year. Um, I was a bit nervous before the time trial. I guess most of that pressure I put on myself because yeah, I'm the one doing most of like the ergos and stuff, the hard work there. Um, I, I do all the ergos. I mean, I'm the one doing most of the hard work. Lots of people <laughs> also support me. But yeah, I felt a little bit nervous coming into that as the favorite. So normally I'm the underdog and I love being the underdog, but yeah, it's a bit different this nationals. But on the whole, I've yeah, it's been really nice for lots of support, which is cool. And I think that people, do understand that we're young, anything can happen. Like, yeah, I just try to emphasize that I'm, I am training hard and racing as hard as I can, but I'm also just having fun and seeing where it takes me. And what about you, Luke? I mean, there's a lot of buzz. It's like uh, every single world tour team is keen to get your scribble. Um, does, does that add to the pressure of everything or, or is the excitement, you know, what, what's really driving things at the moment? Uh, to be honest, I guess for me, it's all really new to that sort of stuff. Like only the last seven days, really, there's been that added outside attention. Um, and I think I'm lucky enough that Nationals were now that I've been able to focus on that and almost push everything aside and say, look, we'll sort a lot of that out after tomorrow's road race for me. Um, but yeah, it definitely is weird having the extra attention and the extra buzz on social media. Um, it's nice. And like going into the TT the other day, it was all... I guess I was pretty nervous myself because it was quite a big call to go up to the elites. Um, and I guess it could have gone it could have gone the other way and I would have looked like a bit of an idiot for doing it. So I was, I was glad that did pay off and <laughs> I, I myself not make myself look like an idiot. Um, but yeah, like after tomorrow, I'm sure I'll like start replying to people and see what we can sort up, um, sort out. But yeah, I guess tomorrow's been the main focus for me and then after that we'll, we'll work out what happens from there. I just uh, jab it here because you, you're both going to be targeting the Olympics. Uh, you're yeah, with, with the uh, uh, you'll probably have two avenues to go, Luke. But uh, you're you're in the uh, our elite uh, track squad with the team's pursuit, and I know that you blokes are you know 
really, really looking good for for a gold medal in, in Tokyo. Uh, and, and Sarah, you're also, um, uh, uh, of course, especially after tomorrow, uh, uh, I can't see you not be going to the Olympics. I can't see anyone beating you tomorrow. You're my red hot favourite. John, I, I just talked about pressure, mate. Come on. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they handle it. They handle it well. Yeah. Luke, Luke. Also, just as hot a favourite, but he's got a bit of a challenge because the, the team bike exchange, you've got four guys uh, who can uh, win it. John, 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 yeah. John, rephrase it, Sarah. Just go out and have fun tomorrow. <laughs> and the results take care of itself. But, but uh, she does yeah, have no. fun. The one thing I love about you, Sarah, I love, in, the, in that wonderful stage, you won stage two of uh, uh, the Tour Down Under or Cycling Festival. Uh, you were up the road. You had minutes. At one stage, the whole bike exchange seemed on the front trying to close the gap. I mean, they did about 20 minutes of full on, and I think they closed five seconds on you. And you were sort of talking to the camera, waving to the camera at the same time. <laughs> like you were having fun even though you are out there. It was great to watch. Yeah. Oh, that was because my I, on the radio, um, Donna was on the radio to me, and she said, oh, your team owner, Linda, just told me, to tell you that your whole team's watching, they're all cheering. So then I had to give a little wave to the camera <laughs> to say hi to them. But I definitely was trying really hard. <laughs> but no, quite, well, it was one of those questions I was leading to, firstly with you, Luke. Um, let's hope the Olympics all happen and it's looking stronger and stronger than it's going to. Do you then plan to um, jump in at the end of the year and, and probably go world tour uh, for the last part of the season? Is that, is that uh, a big chance, do you think? Yeah, look, to be honest, I don't know how I'm going to pull up after the games. I think from talking to a fair few people, you never know how you are mentally after the games. You might want to get straight back into it and, and tick some more goals off or you might want to really refresh and have some time off and reset for the next year. So I honestly don't know how I'll feel come Tokyo. Like, that's been our, our biggest goal for the last year. So after we finish that team's pursuit, uh, yeah, I don't know where my head will be at. I think I'd love to give the world... Um, but again, I might turn up and be like, no, nah, I'm ready to just uh, have a bit of an off and have some fun <laughs> a few months before we start in January again. I'll, I'll give you some advice, mate. I'd take a spell. I've got a few yeah. contacts at the Maldives. I could hook you up with a week's accommodation. I think you just need a bit of a spell, recharge your batteries. You're only young. I mean, you were born after the Sydney Olympics. When I read that, I, that <laughs> freaked me out. <laughs> but um, getting back to, I know you said, you you know, you want to get through tomorrow's race and then sit down and work about, you know, work out what's happening with the teams and so forth. But it, it is it is a big decision. And it, and it is, a, is it something when you're way up, it really has to be the right fit for your development. You know, if you're looking at the teams, I mean, what are some of the things that come into that uh, decision making process? Yeah, I think firstly, I don't want to give up the track just yet. Like I'd love to keep did going at Madison. So for me, that would be something that I guess they'd have to support and be on board with that. I might want to dabble in in the track in the future for the Olympics to maybe com games. Uh, so that's that's probably the biggest thing. Um, and then as well, having the support to get set up in Europe. I think like Sarah's on her way. She's been over there before, but I'd like to you know, make it. A yeah. Always help have the Kiwis and Aussies in the team just to make you feel welcome. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Sarah, you know, you're talking about you're still doing studies and, and things outside of the bike. I mean, how important is it for you to have that balance? We've talked about um, having that balance with a, a number of different cyclists. Do you, do you find it difficult with the demands, particularly as you progress uh, and get to the pro ranks with the amount of time you need to train and work on things like your university and studies? Uh, so far, I've found it fine. So, yeah, I've been full-time so far in my degree, so two years. But last year I was prepared to go down to part-time. Like, I'm not in a rush to finish because I don't even know what I want to do after I finish. So, yeah, I'm, I really like having it alongside cycling. But, yeah, I'm happy to drop to part-time when I need to. It was just that because I came home because of COVID and then I never got to go back, unfortunately. Then I was at home all year, so I thought, yeah, may as well just keep studying. But, yeah, I'll, I think I'll always just have it alongside for sure, especially um, being a female cyclist. I don't earn much money and stuff. So need a backup plan anyway. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I like both. I just like trying my best in whatever I do. I'm just going to say, Sarah, you're actually – coming into the world tour right at the right time in that 
they're finally starting to really recognise women's cycling. You're getting a lot more mm. TV time. And the money, I see the Trek, have just uh, uh, brought the minimum wage for the guys, the same for the girls, which is fantastic. And other teams are going to start doing that. So you are coming in at the right time. And oh, I for just, sure, yeah. And, and, and it's great that your, your contract with TIPCO is a wonderful American team, but we want to see you in Europe in the big in the big. Uh, game as they say so is that something you're, you're looking at for next year yeah i mean i i don't think i'm as popular as luke my phone hasn't been buzzing off the hook like i read yours was um, <laughs> but yeah i might have some few, uh, some options for next year um my contract with tipco silicon valley bank goes to the end of this year and they although i didn't get to race last year it wasn't really the team's fault at all it was more just the pandemic made everything difficult, so I was stuck in Australia, which sucked. But, yeah, I, they are a great team and they do do some great racing in Europe too. So hopefully I'll have a chance this year to get over to Europe and do a lot more of maybe the Ardennes. And I'm really crossing my fingers that we get an invite to the Giro Rosa because I'd absolutely love to do that. Uh, what, are, what are you actually studying, Sarah? Yeah. I'm doing linguistics and geography now. I swapped. I was doing um, computer science and maths, and then I did a breadth in linguistics, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. So yeah, I just thought yeah, maybe it would be easier to find, like, a job from doing computer science, but I just follow my passion, just like recycling. Mm. Just do what I love and <laughs> do my best at it and see where it takes me. Hey, Luke, uh, seeing the results, particularly last year on a, on a world tour scale, I mean, you know, you've got these 21-year-olds winning the bloody Tour de France. I mean, how much confidence does that give you seeing what this young brigade are achieving on, on a national or international scale? Yeah, for sure. I think it's shown that the times are changing a bit now. Um, and teams are willing to give the young pups a bit of a crack and let them have some opportunities. I think that's been the best thing to see. It's not... You're not going for the old guys now and all working for them. So I think Hershey as well, you got to see him have a crack. Um, obviously, you've seen Remco and uh, Pogacar win the tour. So I think it's, it is trending in the right way. And hopefully, Lukey Hamilton um, can give a tour this year a grand year crack and see how he goes. So I really do think it is, uh, it's becoming more welcoming and inviting for younger guys to move over there earlier. Um, and it shows as well that they're willing to support you from a young age, which... I don't know if it has been as much um, in the past. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting over there and hopefully having a few opportunities. Ify? Well, I know I'd love to see both of, the, uh, uh, of these two uh, on the uh, uh, Team Bike Exchange team, of course, but I'm only the team mascot, and so I don't have much influence. But I will be uh, getting to Jerry Ryan here when he gets here tomorrow, and he's following both races. So uh, I'll, I'll be uh, uh, twisting his arm and getting in his ear. But, look... <laughs> I'm excited about, about you too. I can remember, Sarah, when you rode the Bay Crits a couple of years ago and I got you with Lexus the Blackbird. And I remember talking to Andrew, the, the, the Andrew Moore, who owns Lexus the Blackbird, and he knew, of course, he knew about uh, Spratty, who was also in the team with you. And I said, no, you just watch this young Sarah. I said, she'll be world number one within three years. I reckon you could do it in, inside that. So, um, Oh, I don't know. I think that's this year. <laughs> Maybe give me 30 years. <laughs> But look, you both uh, have got the potential. I think, uh, uh, Luke, you are surprisingly uh, good in the in, in the mountains for a great big trackie that you are. Um, and uh, I think you've got the, the motor and everything to go all the way and be one of our next uh, Tour de France stars with a chance for the for the uh, overall for the GC. So um, I'm just... And the fact that you two go back to that young age at Brunswick and are mates, it's just such a... Absolutely amazing story. We'll make we could make a movie about this, Dan. Be better than better than the detour, right. mate. Be better than the detour. Well, we got another topic for Jerry tomorrow. We'll start the process. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I was I was going to say as well, uh, Luke. You actually uh, raced against uh, Remco, and you ran second to him in 2018 in the Junior World. Uh, I think we've got a photo of that. Yeah. Um, what what was that experience like? Oh, look, I thought I had a bloody awesome race and then got pumped by a minute and a half. So, <laughs> um, yeah, look, it was a great experience. And I think after seeing what he's done now, gives him, oh, it gives me a lot of confidence. And the bloke that got thirds now, um, a pro with the Astana as well. So we'll see how he goes this year. Um, but no, it was a bloody awesome experience being over there. And I got to 
spend a bit of time with Rowan as well. And that was that he won that year as well, which was pretty awesome. So I learned a fair bit off him. And yeah, I guess seeing where Remco has gone now, it does give me a lot of confidence that maybe in a couple of years I could give it a crack too. Um, what is the best bit of advice you can give to, because obviously there's a lot of younger people getting into cycling. You, you can see a lot of young people at, at the races here in Ballarat. Sarah, what's, what's the best tip you can give to anyone out there, you know, that's wanting to get into the sport and, and what are the keys you think to becoming successful at that? Ah, I probably sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but yeah, just make sure you find, uh, if you're just trying to get into the sport, Sign up to a cycling club, find some friends to ride with. And if you want to go get better, then find faster friends to ride with. That's, I always ride with the fastest people who will um, put up with having me tag along. <laughs> and, yeah, just do stuff like sprint for 60 signs, go for Strava segments, just have fun, race as much as you can. And, yeah, just don't worry if it, if it seems to take a while because it doesn't seem that long ago that, I was just stepping up to the NRS and it all seemed so big and scary. And I was, my goals were to like not get dropped in the first five kilometers or try not to get in like the bottom five in the time trial. And yeah, that was only like four, four years ago and now, or even three years ago, really. And now I'm, yeah, national TT champion. So don't worry if it seems to take a while because yeah, these things take time and just enjoy yourself along the way because it's really like the journey that you spend the most time on rather than the one day that you might win a race. Like I win the national TT on one day of, of the year and maybe one day of my life. Okay, two, because I won it last year. But, you know, like the actual time you spend winning is so small, so it makes you enjoy the rest of the time too, all the training. And, and what about you, Luke? That's fantastic advice from Sarah. Uh for me, I reckon it'd be keep doing um, multiple disciplines of the sport. I, I saw a pretty interesting stat. I was chatting to Gero yesterday about the people that are mixing track or road or mountain bike or cyclocross, um, how they're going in the sport. And there are, a lot of them are in the top percent of like have been at the top of the sport um, for what they've chosen. So I think for me, mixing the track and roads being what I've enjoyed, but I can see it definitely helps with both things. So I definitely don't think pigeon hell yourself early as a as a roadie or a tracky uh, and keep doing keep doing a bit of everything and i think we can see that now in the world tour especially um like you've got pidcock who's just going to ineos who kills it on the cyclocross and obviously you've got your two big boys as well so i think for me it's yeah keep mixing track and road which it is for me or cyclocross or mountain bikes because i think it mixes it up and keeps it fresh as well uh so yeah that's probably the best thing i'd say that's uh, good advice as well we've had a few comments uh live Jenny Whitehead says, two really impressive young people. What a great future ahead. Uh, we've got one from uh, Val Murugan. Says, excellent. Dan Jones meeting both Sarah Gigante and Luke. Tab Systems wishes the uh, best for your future. And Jenny Whitehead also says, if you please use your persuasive <laughs> influence on Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying that. Uh, I've got to say, I, I think it's quite uh, just... Uh, perfect that the under 23 men uh, just started uh, that was the noise we heard just a couple of minutes ago right behind me the under 23 women have just finished <laughs> and but I here we are. did i miss my race john <laughs> <laughs> oh no the under 19 junior sorry <laughs> love, the junior women. but um that, that's the future of cycling but you guys are showing that the future of cycling has or is already here uh, and, and I, I can only see uh, wonderful things happening for you too uh, uh, in, in the future. It's going to be sensational. Nah, cheers, John. Yeah, thanks so much. And Cheryl says, best wishes to both Sarah and Luke for tomorrow. Have fun. That's it. Love it. There's no Love that. <laughs> Go out and enjoy it. But uh, if he, is there anything you want to ask before we go? Look, uh, yeah, look, I, well, let's get down to the hard part. I would mm. like to hear from both of you. No one else is ever going to listen to this from the other teams. What's, so oh, start yeah. with you, Luke. What's your plan for tomorrow? Because you know you can win this, but you've got a real uh, uh, challenge on your hands with uh, such a strong uh, team bike exchange. Yeah, look, I think we saw what the bike exchange boys did to Wells to yesterday. Uh, they pretty much made it impossible for him to win. So I think they could be trying to do the exact same thing tomorrow. Um, yeah, look, oh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. they got four guys. We've got a couple 
with the informed boys, but they've got so many cars to play. So for me, yeah, look, get get up the road or sit in the bunch. I guess either way, I hope with flight ups to go, it's, I'm still in with the fight, and then anything can happen from there. Uh, yeah, look, I. Now, I've had a hundred scenarios go through my head of how I think I could win tomorrow, how it could pan out, um, and all of, all of the bike exchange boys doing something to stuff me over. So I will soon find out. Why <laughs> don't you just say? Why don't you just say to Jerry or put it out there? And say, listen, I ain't signing if you guys gang up on me tomorrow. So there's your opportunity. Here's a down payment. Let's work together. I'll get the the bands and away we go. <laughs> Somehow, I don't reckon. We'll get, we'll, we'll get him on the Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a shot. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but look, as we've learned in this national title, it doesn't always go to plan. We've had some amazing uh, uh, turnarounds and results. Uh, for Freiburg a couple of years ago. You know, we, we, anything can happen. And now, the same question uh, uh, to you, Sarah. Uh, you know, you've got uh, the same battle with, with Team Bike Exchange. But uh, I think you're a much stronger possibility because at the moment you're so much stronger on the climb than everyone else. I don't know what they can do uh, to beat you, actually. Oh, I don't know. I think anything can happen, especially at the Nationals. Like, everyone's coming red hot, all the domestic riders especially, myself included there because I was here during the whole lockdown. So I was just training for Nationals too. So, yeah, I think a lot of people have been targeting this race and, of course, bike exchange is also super strong. So it's like a, a clash. Everyone's coming together. We've got the strong NRS teams, and then we have the World Tour team, bike exchange. We also have um, a few other pros. So Loretta and Hansen and Chloe Hosking are teammates together on Trek. Neve Bradbury's with Canyon Shram. Rachel Nayland's here, and then I'm here too. And yeah, I think it'll be a super exciting race. So I wouldn't say it, like it's really me as the a really big favorite just because it's so open and yeah i have no teammates I mean, i'm feeling strong but as you know strength isn't everything it's not always the strongest rider who wins so i think we'll have to just wait and see what happens really hopefully it's exciting uh, well, you're right it'll be a great race yeah, yeah. that's a guarantee yeah well as I said, we really appreciate you guys coming on the show. I mean, the big motivation for us is to get in early before you become absolute bona fide international superstars so that when we do call on you in three or four years' time, I know, right? I know. So you've yeah. got to get in early so that we can say, hey, remember, we were there at the very beginning. So this is as much of a tactical play for us than anything. But uh, enjoy tomorrow, guys. We really appreciate you being on the show and we look forward to chatting to you both again soon. Thank uh, you. And guys. have fun. Have fun. No thanks, pressure. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. We'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Uh, as we said, absolute superstars and really appreciate them being on the show. Now, John, before we get to the sponsor's plug, here's a quick word from our great mates at Bike Exchange. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at this guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs, semi-amateurs, and pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank and these bars. This could be the perfect match, but not this one. This girl has a bike to sell, and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on Bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides. Again, to our great friends at Bike Exchange and Johnny, uh, being here in Ballarat, we're seeing a lot of Let's Go motorhomes floating around. We certainly are, because uh, um, they're the way to go. And look at it, there's a uh, ripple we're looking at right there. So Let's Go Motorhomes. Um, Andrew, uh, who, who uh, manages in there, is uh, coming up here tomorrow. He's got, uh, I think it's about five or six of them being rented out to the teams. Uh, so they're everywhere around Ballarat. But... Mm. Uh, you know, with the pandemic, it's been very different. You know, normally, you have people coming in from overseas and hiring their, their their vehicles. But it's become so popular for Australians now to go and look at their own backyard that they've mm. been uh, 
you know, running out the door. I drove past on the way to the airport, the Let's Go Motorhomes uh, uh, head, up, you know, display is or, or, or their storage is right there and it was almost empty the uh, the yard because uh, they're all out which is fantastic well ian gates uh the tv producer he's got a let's go motorhome and he loves it because he doesn't have to um you know talk too much with his crew he can just get in his let's go and isolate and I don't know, surf the net. <laughs> he loves it. it, it look, it, it, it's actually worked very well for Gatesy because I'm actually staying with the with his media crew in a house just near the, uh, the the race here, and it's really wonderful for us that when Gatesy goes off and hops into his own little place, uh, uh, separate from us, we all love it. Yeah, everyone can relax, and uh, obviously, <laughs> Jayco Caravans. There's record pre-orders, Johnny. Gone through uh, the yes. roof. Well, it is. I think it's something like, uh, well, I won't go to how many thousand back orders there are, but, you know, if you're after a caravan, who else would you go to? Jayco has been sponsoring cycling since uh, 1995, I think. We, he first came on board, 1994, when he sponsored Cathy Watt for 92 for the Olympics. So that's a long while involved in the sport. He, he, I was just talking today out riding, you know, this live telecast that happens here happened because... One day, he said to Ian Gates, what's it going to cost to get this uh, uh, live? Uh, uh, it was the last day of the Sun Tour, uh, live. And he said, oh, lot. He said, we'll make it happen. He made that happen, and that moved into the live coverage we now have here in Australian title. So we can thank uh, Jerry Ryan and Jayco for all of that. And uh, another great Jerry Ryan brand is Mitchell and Wines. Perfect weather to have a Shiraz, or if you've got a bit of coin the old print johnny yes the heat good shiraz is my my favorite uh and there we are looking at the beautiful hotel so one of australia's favorite wineries and a place of escape experience the history and the beauty and the serenity of the goldman valley at your own pace only just over an hour out of melbourne looking over the vineyards from the iconic tower staying at the new hotel relaxing by the pool, recharging in the day spa, which is sensational, where you can quiet the mind, unwind the body, and rediscover balance in a setting of peace and harmony. Sounds good, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Explore the seasonal menu at the Muse restaurant, which is just amazing, where local produce offers worlds of flavour, sample their seasonal menu with all wine perfectly paired. Stop by the Provador and tour the cellars, and, of course, taste their highly awarded signature wines. Taste the craft and care in every bottle at their cellar door. Mitchell has become a very popular place for weddings and to celebrate those special occasions. And, of course, you have to go down and visit the Aboriginal Art Gallery, which is the world's biggest private um, Aboriginal Art Gallery uh, and has a huge range of amazing pieces. Royal of the Nation's Best Artists. And there it is, the $10,000 Land Cruiser with the $2.5 million paint job. It's uh, bounced from four to one point eight. Now it's back to two point five. I reckon it'll probably get up to around five or six uh, by the end of the year for sure. Uh, just recapping the interview earlier, you know, as we've always said, absolute superstars on the cusp. But uh, it's amazing how balanced both of those guys are. You know, they've both got very uh, good heads on their shoulders. I mean, Sarah's a a ninety nine point nine five. Uh, genius. I mean, I'd hate to reveal what score I got in Year Twelve, uh, but also Luke seems like he's he's got a really good head on his shoulders. If in terms of um, some of the advice he gave people and and where he's headed for a pretty exciting future. That's the most enjoyable interview uh, that that uh, we've done, as far as I'm concerned. I thought I just enjoyed that immensely. Yeah, no, fantastic. And uh, what are your predictions for the road race, mate? Who do you think is going to win? Um, I, I think uh, Team Vikings Jones will win the, the men's because they've got the four options. Um, I know that Cam would love to go back to back. Uh, and, and Durbo's definitely got the form to, to win it. But um, uh, look, I, I might just go with Durbo. He's, he's in yeah. cracking form. Uh, and the women, I, I'll probably be a fraction flip and saying, uh, but I do think Sarah is the favourite. She's climbing so much better than everyone else, but she's going to have to ride very smart because they will, uh, um, if she goes too early, they'll pull her back and, uh, and, and out sprint her. So uh, it's going to be a wonderful race, but I'll go with Sarah uh, Giganti to take that one out. No, I agree. Giganti and uh, Durbridge, uh, there's your winners of each of the road races, but 
as we've seen the Nationals, anything can happen. And uh, as we say every week, if you want to uh, follow us, uh, go to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash the Detour Podcast. Tick on notifications and you'll get a notification every time we go live. And next week, we're hopefully lining up uh, probably the biggest name in world cycling as a rider and what, what he achieved in his career. Just trying to go through our local uh, connection there in Belgium. And if we can pull that one off, Ify, that's going to be a cracking interview, mate. Yes, we'll try and get the actual – he's agreed to do it. We've got to get the date, uh, yep. what day we're going to do it next week. So we just need to uh, get that, and then we'll really start promoting it because it's going to be a fantastic uh, chat. Well, stay tuned for that. Thanks again to Sarah and Luke for a fantastic interview, uh, and good luck to all the riders tomorrow in the, in the National Road Championships here in Australia. And uh, we'll speak to you soon again next week. Stay tuned.